G'day, it's Dylan O'Donnell here for Star Stuff. No real um, singular theme to today's video, just wanna have a chat about little things that have been going on in my life in astrophotography. How is your astrophotography going? Uh, thank you for tagging me in all your photos. I hope you're getting some clear skies and great images. The ones you tag me in are anything to go by, you certainly are. And I know that some of you use the tutorials and the information I post on my videos to help get the best out of your images, which is great. Why do we do this? astrophotography stuff, uh, I don't know, sort of pointless really. I mean, does it have to have a point? I don't think it does. Life doesn't have a point and I like life. Now I could talk about the weather, but if there's one thing I hate more than anything else, it's astronomers talking about the weather. Like we get it, you live on planet earth, so do I. There's weather here, sometimes it's bad. Just use the weather as an excuse for your crap photos. I certainly do. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. <laughs> Last Friday night, I really couldn't be bothered. I just went outside with the StarSense Explorer, chucked on the NextYZ adapter for my phone, put my phone in, took a photo of the moon. So easy. Even though I've got lots of expensive equipment and this is a expensive hobby, it doesn't mean you can't enjoy it at a really simple level sometimes. Also, Happy birthday, Celestron. It's 60 years this year. 60 years of making telescopes. Now, I will use all sorts of brands, and in this hobby, you end up using all kinds of stuff. Your telescope rigs become a mishmash of all sorts of different brands. But I gotta say, for me, I've loved using Celestron stuff, and I will continue to use Celestron stuff. This is not sponsored or anything. I just really like this stuff. So the last image I took, the image of 104 Sombrero Galaxy, was taken with this setup. Now, this isn't gonna work. I need a an additional spacer here, a helical focuser, and I need a more sensitive camera as well than this 120mm. So I'm still working on the off-axis guider setup for this, but it is coming. Also have the QHY24C directly connected up to a T-ring and spacer that can go back at the rear cell of that C11. And I haven't really done a full image with that just yet. I'm probably gonna stick the reducer on first. The reducer has arrived. I haven't taken it out of the box yet, but that's gonna go on the rear cell. Uh, maybe let's do that today. Found a little leak just in here uh, that was spewing water onto the onto the motor inside. It actually killed my webcam because the webcam got flooded for the water. So I've just siliconed it up. The next time guys wanted to send me a new one, but I, I don't need a new one. This one works fine. It, it's just a little leak, so I'll plug that up. I still love this thing. Even if you don't use it as a safety monitor to close the dome or whatever, just having this in your backyard means instead of having to check the weather report to see if it's clear. You just check the graph on your own <laughs> weather station and then you don't have to walk outside and actually look up at the sky. Now there's going to be a graphic warning on this next bit. Uh, look away if you're not prepared to see something that may traumatize you for life. There was another ant's nest in there. Um, presumably they liked the heat, but the worst of it was in the camera. Now this camera is okay, but again, look away if graphic images disturb you. I just don't even like thinking about it, but I have used that camera since and it is, okay, it's working. All of that uh, circuitry down the back there is the cooling for the camera. Uh, it's mostly a big Peltier heatsink, so no damage, but uh, did freak me out a bit. Here is the image train I've been playing with. Uh, I did find that I needed another spacer here which stopped the filters from locking up in the EF filter wheel. This is a ZWA EF filter wheel, and that worked really well. But two and a half times power mate on a C11 
is a lot. I'll put the calculation here. It was kind of insane. Um, I did get Clavius Crater, but the seeing is so wobbly at that magnification that uh, really I have to wait for a beautifully clear night to get the most out of such a long focal length. That's what I'll be shooting Jupiter, Saturn and Mars on later on in the season. And this bad boy, which I'm pretty sure every astrophotographer has, especially the people that shoot Canon, T-ring adapter for your DSLR. In my case, Canon DSLR, because let's face it, Canon are the best. That's good to go for next time. All right, fresh gear. And this whole ring at the back will come off. And the thick end goes straight onto the rear cell here. And we put that back on. Make sure it's all tight as a nun's nasty. And that is ready to go with my camera tonight. Having the reducer on the C11 is sort of the perfect field of view for a moon portrait. Yeah, because we're on the moon, I'm gonna set the tracking rate to lunar so it doesn't drift out of frame. It's so easy, a kid can do it. You show them filling up the frame there beautifully and then he's just snapping away some images. Is this a touch screen? It is. Um, can you put one out for me? Okay, so this next bit might be a bit dark, but it's a dark story. And it's an astronomy story. In fact, it's an astrophotography story for me uh, because it involves a place that I go to regularly to do astrophotography. Thanks for sticking around this long anyway, and I'll be back soon with another video.